Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Oh, we are so delighted to be here for another Pride Shabbat. And we're going to do something a little bit different for our sermon. We're going to do some looking back on the last 25 years uh, uh, and also like talking some Torah, looking at our, our Torah portion. And we're going to keep it to a brief 45 minutes. <laughs> so. Uh, and before we start, though, I just wanted to define a, a few terms that we might use in this clergy talk. Uh, so we say it's Pride Samea, Happy Pride. We're here for Pride Shabbat. And what, what is this? This is a celebration of the Jewish LGBTQ community, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer community. I know that the word queer hits differently uh, for different generations. And especially for like millennials and Gen Z, uh, queer is kind of like this preferred umbrella term, kind of like we all call ourselves Jewish, but there are like different ways of being Jewish. So queer is like that umbrella term for just being part of the LGBTQ community. Oh, Rabbi, you're a little bit older than me. <laughs> So I, I grew up I grew up in the 80s and in the 90s, born in 86. What year were you born? 64. 64. Born yeah. in 64. So we've we've seen we've seen a, a different world, and now we're like we both serve our congregation. Uh, and one of the things I find interesting is that both of us grew up outside of the conservative movement. So you grew up in the reform, reform movement, movement. Yeah. In in. Uh, Binghamton. Binghamton, New York. I grew up in the Orthodox movement in South Florida, but we both found ourselves here in the conservative movement. And I'm curious, like, what have you seen change over, over your rabbinate and over your time in rabbinical school? Well, dramatic changes, you know, for sure, in terms of the queer community. It's a story some of you may have heard me tell before, but when I was at JTS, I was ordained at JTS in 1998, uh, 1998. And um, at the time, if you were queer and you were in rabbinical school and someone found out that you were queer, you were kicked out of rabbinical school. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, that was the conservative movement's approach. That's 1998, so that's not so many years ago, if no. you think about it. And uh, there was, there were, a couple of students that I knew about who were queer at the time in, in the rabbinical uh, student community. Um, and I'll never forget, I, I've told Rabbi Zazo this story, Rabbi Sorokin also, but I, re I remember going to the senior sermon of one of those students. And some students in, in the community knew that this person was queer and, and some students probably did not. But uh, at his senior sermon, he, he stepped up and he was, he was talking about the parsha. and at a certain point in the sermon, he said, you know, there are, there are some rules that as rabbinical students we are expected to follow. And I'm here today to tell you I don't follow one of those rules. And this was, again, it was 98, and we, you know, those of us who knew that, that he was queer were like, holy smokes, I mean, he's gonna, but he, he walked over to the, there was a, a little sign, this was in the seminary women's chapel, right? And there was a little sign um, right at the entranceway that said, when you're here, you should, you should say the prayers in the following way. And one of them had to do with- um, Yisrael. With Isha Yisrael. Which, which we is, don't have in our prayer. Which is the fires of Israel. It's, it's a prayer, it's a, it's a phrase in the Amidah which is used to sort of pray for the restoration of the temple service and like from ancient sacrifices. Times. We want, but you're not in the conservative movement, at least then, and you were not supposed to say, we want the sacrifices right. to come back. And, and so he, he walked over and he said, I don't say that. I say, I say the other thing. Um, but, he, but he had made his point. You know, there's a, there's a rabbinic phrase, hamevin yavin, like those who know, know. Um, and he had made his point, but that was, that was 98. Um, and then uh, I came here, and uh, one of the most vivid memories I have of um, my, my earlier time here was the decision, and it was a congregational decision, really led by Rabbi Loeb, to conduct a commitment ceremony 
um, for, for two women, two young women, one of whom had grown up in the congregation, had become bat mitzvah here. Now in those days you couldn't have a marriage because there was no legal structure for same-sex same -sex marriage. This is back in 2004, 2005. Um, but the request was not only to have the clergy of the synagogue officiate at the commitment ceremony, but to do it in the building, in the building. And as far as I know, as far as I know, in, in the, so in the end, there was a long process, uh, multiple board meetings, intensive conversation. We studied the issue through a halachic lens, through a Jewish legal lens. Um, and in the end, with the board on board, um, we, we had the commitment ceremony. It was in this room. Um, it was in this room, and it was Cantor King and Rabbi Loeb, wow. and I was there as well. And what um, was that year? So that was 2005. That was 2005. Um, Cutting Rabbi, edge. And at it the was. time, I, I think it was the first commitment ceremony performed in a conservative synagogue in the country. I'm not 100% sure. Do you know Rabbi Sorokin? But if, if it wasn't, it was certainly one of the first in a conservative synagogue in the entire country. It was very cutting edge, and I vividly remember walking when it was when the, the service the ceremony was over, and the, the couple went off with their families to have like a luncheon or something, and Cantor King and Rabbi Loeb and I were walking out the corridor here, and Rabbi Loeb said this. I remember it like it was yesterday. He said, "You know, I, I until this second I didn't know if this was the right thing or this was the wrong." He said, "It's the best thing I've ever done in a rabbi." That's what he said. I remember that. My God. And he, he created the ceremony for it, and he made a beautiful ceremony. Beautiful, beautiful ceremony. Um, so, so for me, I mean, that gives you a little bit of a sense of like how dramatically things have changed, again, in a relatively short period of time. And then, and then you get to JTS. I get to JTS. So yeah. I started at the Jewish Theological Seminary in 2017. It's my first year of rabbinical school, and I'd already picked up a master's degree in Jewish education from Hebrew College in uh, 2011 through 2014. And even in those couple of years, I felt like there had been a big shift because when I graduated with my master's, I remember feeling concerned that I wouldn't get a job working at a Jewish day school because I'm queer. I remember like being in interviews and really being concerned that I wouldn't be allowed to teach Talmud, wouldn't be allowed to teach uh, Tanakh. I, but I found that there was like a real hunger amongst Jewish day schools and also in congregations uh, to have positive role models of what an engaged Judaism looks like. And I feel very lucky that I taught at two different Schechter schools before JTS. But by the time I got to JTS, about half of the students in my class identified either as queer or as trans, non-binary. Um, yeah, about half of us. And really, that's, that's the norm right now in the conservative movement, in, especially in the seminary, that a, really, like, almost 50% of rabbinical students are from the LGBTQ community and are going out to serve for the most part like large suburban congregations like ours. Um, and it's just a fascinating way that like the world has changed, I yeah. think. And again, that's, that's spin in a, in a relatively quick period of time. We'll, we'll turn to a couple thoughts about the Cedra in a second, but just to give folks a little bit of a timeline, Rabbi Zaslow put this timeline together. So again, I'm in rabbinical school in, in 98. Uh, if, if you're queer, you're kicked out, and, if, and it's discovered, you're kicked out of rabbinical school. Also in 1998, you, you'll remember, was the, the murder of Matthew Shepard that year um, in Wyoming. Was that Wyoming? Yeah, in Wyoming. In, in Wyoming. Um, so uh, 2005, Rabbi Loeb leads the congregation through that commitment ceremony process, and we have the commitment ceremony here. Um, then in 2006, 2007, the conservative movement through the structure of the CJLS, which is the Committee for Jewish Law and Standards, um, gets very seriously interested in trying to halakhically figure out this whole question, this whole mm -hmm. issue. Um, and, a, and a significant paper in 2006 is published um, by Elliot Dorf and Danny Nevins and, and Avram Reisner, Who's by the right way. Who's right here. Uh, yeah, Avi lives here in town. And at that point, 
it was legally, according to the conservative movement, permitted for someone who openly identified as queer to go to rabbinical school. That was 2006. And it, to get married. And to get married, but the, but the movement had no structure for, for that wedding. Um, and then by 2012, uh, 2012 yeah, 2012, um, the movement creates a, a, uh, a marriage ceremony for uh, people of same sex. And um, also a divorce ceremony, because if you make marriages, you have to find a way to Jewishly. Because we can't do anything easily, that's no. why. <laughs> and then in 2015, uh, same sex marriage becomes legal, right, in, in all states, going throughout the country. Mm -hmm. um, so that's thoughts good. about Shlach Lecha and, and the Pride Shabbat. And okay, so I, I gave us this task that we had to find some Pride Shabbat Torah in our, our Torah reading from today. So the opening from our Parsha, or the name of our Parsha, is Shlach. It means send for yourself, send out. And it's when B'nai Israel they're asking if they can send troops into the land of Israel to spy out the land. Uh, one of my favorite commentators, the Spot Emmet, thank God, the Spot Emmet writing in the 1800s, late 1800s, he kind of ignores what happens with the Meraglim, with the spies themselves, because like, if we're looking in the Torah, it does not end very well. So he ignores the whole story, and he just focuses in on that opening word, shlach, to send. And the Sfat Emet says, what does this mean, shlach? This is the quest that each of our souls are on, that we are all on an individual shlichut, we are all on an, on an individual quest to find the mitzvot that are relevant to us and to live our lives with authenticity. This is the quest that God has given to each of us. But we are, we are each like these messengers of God being put out into the world with our unique characteristics and our unique mitzvot. I thought there's no greater pride Torah than that, to be authentic to yourself, to seek out the mitzvot, uh, and to be an emissary of God within this world. Yeah, what you, about you, Rabbi? No, like along the same lines, and, and I spoke a little bit at the board meeting Wednesday, Wednesday night, Wednesday night about this same idea, is I, I think there's just a, a kind of thread uh, or theme that is identity connected in, in the Parsha, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's the Rashi comment at the end of the Sedra on the Maftir, actually, that you read, that you chanted, where Rashi says, basically says, what was the, what was the sin that the spies committed? What, what did they do wrong? You know, and, and he says what they did wrong really was that they went in um, and they didn't, they didn't see themselves as actually belonging in the land of Israel. They went in as, as tourists, right? As folks who felt disconnected. Um, and that whole sense of what it means to, to fully embrace your identity to fully understand like who you are and and from that to figure out how you have to navigate the world right so that's i'm getting a tumult know, yeah so, oh, Rabbi. so but that's what it is and i think that that thread is you know very powerful it's the identity identifying as a jew identifying with the land of israel that you see in in the parsha and uh, and someone who's queer you know these days to, to get back to that change it's a very different uh, world for, for folks who are in the queer community as opposed to what things were like in the 50s or the 60s or even the 70s. Or the 80s. Or the 80s or the 80s. And, and that sense, that opportunity um, to, to embrace your, your full identity, to understand what that is and, and how you will live in the world that way. Yeah, so, yeah, that's a,